Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another video. Today, guys, I would actually like to talk about a topic that I quickly went over towards the end of a stream last week, but it does deserve itself a video because this is one of my favorite topics, and it has to do with a state that was pretty bottom tier when it came to my favorite list of states. But now, if this actually falls into effect, it will essentially become my favorite state for honestly just that reason alone and two other ones that are really really awesome so we're going to talk about that today and yes of course it does involve dividends as you guys can see right here i do have my portfolio up and also check out the new setup here on uh that i have for video so hopefully everybody likes that this will be going on moving forward so before we get started make sure to like subscribe comment it really does help with the algorithm on youtube as well so make sure to follow us next film investing if you like join us on discord link is in the description below it is the best way to get the videos as soon as they come out so with that said let's get started with this video now, guys, the news that I'm talking about and the state that I'm talking about, it is the state of Texas because Texas lawmakers considering more property tax cuts in 2025 actually it goes even beyond just more tax cuts it's a complete abolition of the property tax in texas we go over here some lawmakers want to get rid of the property tax in texas but experts say texans would have to foot the bill on other taxes so i'm gonna show you guys basically how much money texans would essentially save if there were no property taxes and of course the state already has zero income tax and then we're going to see a little bit of a nuance in regards to that second one that i just mentioned there but the bill on other taxes so let's actually read this a little bit we got austin texas uh state lawmakers are looking for ways to continue cutting property taxes when the texas legislature reconvenes in 2025 on wednesday at the state capitol the texas senate finance committee even crunch the numbers on getting rid of them altogether state officials said to make up the deficit from eliminating property tax entirely texas would have to more than triple its sales tax from six and a quarter percent to 22 percent so let's start off with that first part now i get that 22 percent is massive however let's do some math and some logical thinking critical thinking when it comes to these types of numbers first let's take into account the property tax as you guys can see right here and well we can see that the property tax average county when it comes to this specific zip code which is 73301 which is the same zip code as austin so i'm going to take austin when it comes to this guys the average county's tax rate is around 1.77 percent when it comes to property taxes now what i did was is i took the assessed home value okay this is different than the market value and did a very very quick google search when it came to this now this specific zip code it is for travis county and we can see here that the median taxable value for a home the median not average but the median it is well in 2024 it was around four hundred and one thousand eight hundred and six dollars so i'm gonna round it up to four hundred and two thousand dollars all right and the median market value is a whopping five hundred and fifty one thousand so for for this kind of state for this kind of thing because it's property taxes property taxes are based off of state and government valuation when it comes to properties right it is not the market value it is the government assessment value compared to what new york uh, wants to say so if we come back over here i'm gonna put the assessed home value of four hundred and two thousand dollars this ends up being guys a property taxes of seven thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars per year all right, that's a pretty, pretty big number right there, right? $7,115. So that's essentially when it comes to the property taxes. That would mean that $7,000 is off the table, no longer going to happen. And I have over here, top marginal state individual income tax rates. And the reason why Texas is one that a lot of people like is because, well, you guys are seeing it right there. It's gray, meaning that they don't have any income tax. So Texans would actually i believe texas would be the first state to have zero property taxes which is really really incredible to see um it's definitely a pioneer uh if i'm not mistaken i mean that that's pretty huge right so no income taxes and that seven thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars or 115 dollars would essentially disappear which is really really great that would end up saving a lot of people a lot of money so with that let's actually see this a little bit further let's take the median household income in texas and we can see here that again a very quick google search we got seventy three thousand thirty five dollars so right now basically by the way this is the gross income so right now 
obviously 7,000 bucks is coming out of the 73,035 bucks just based off of the property tax. But it's not just that guys. It is of course also the federal income tax as well. And when it comes to this federal income tax, if we put this into a tax bracket calculator, we can see that $73,035 lands you at the tax bracket of, we could see here 12%, right? 12% right there. And the income tax, it is $4,796. And if we add that $7,115 over here, right, which is the property tax, at least in this county, plus the income tax when it comes to the median household income, we can see that Texans are essentially paying in taxes just with these two taxes alone, $12,000, right? $12,000, which again, if we subtract 73,035 minus that, you know, $12,000, which we'll just round up to 12, we can see that they're left with only $61,000. This is only, this is only for the federal income tax and just the property tax. So by the fact that they will not have a property tax anymore, we can add that back to this equation and we can see that now their take home, it is $68,150. But now we have to take a look at the fact that lawmakers are pushing back on this saying that they're going to have to flip this kind of income through or the state's income through another means of taxation. And uh, they're basically saying that the state's income tax will go from six and a quarter, as you guys can see right here, six and a quarter to 22%. And there's back and forth on this, but actually... It turns out that it's actually a lot better for two reasons. Number one is the analytical reason, and the second is the logical reason. So let's start off with the analytical reason first. And let's start off with once again remembering the property taxes annual just off of this county alone at $7,115. All right, keep that number in mind. So let's do a quick research right now. What is the current state's sales tax? And we already kind of saw it, six and a quarter. But if we take a look at this, this essentially tells us how to even get you know the the taxes when it comes to uh when it comes to the sales tax which is actually really really good when it comes to taxes there's two forms of sales tax you got state rate and the local rate at 1.5 percent so obviously we're going to keep the local rate at the same just so that way the numbers make sense right but the six and a quarter percent right here let's make this that 22 percent so if we were to make this six and a quarter right that 22 and we add that and or we keep that 1.5 so basically when you add that point 22 which i'm going to put it in decimal so 22 percent plus this 0 0.015 this is 0.235 now this is in decimal, obviously, so turning it into a percent, all you have to do is just multiply it by 100. Now, the next part would be the taxable purchase, and they have here $100. However, I want to give this a little bit more, I guess, personality. So let's take into account the median grocery income when it comes to the state of Texas. And we can see, or sorry, not the median, but the average. So we can see here that the average Texan spends around $3,471 a year in non-restaurant sustenance or about $289 per month. So let's come back over here and put that. So that 23, 23%, 23 and a, and a half percent, we multiply that by that 289, we get $67.92, right? So let's just make it $67.92 because it will eventually round up. So now if we add that to the $289 that we just got, we get $356.92 in monthly grocery expenses. Okay, now we multiply that by 12, right? Because there's 12 months in a year. This is $4,282.92. And 98 cents, so $4,283. Guys, what was the property tax overall at the end of the year? Right? What was it? One more time, it was $7,115. So, right then and there, it's already proof, at least just with the groceries. I get it. I get it. There's a lot more expenses that people do. You know, it's not just groceries, you also have maintenance on things. You want to have, um, you know, the luxury expenses, whatever it may be, right? whatever it may be. But just by groceries alone, that is a whole lot less than what the property taxes would be. And um, they still have around, actually, let's do that math really quick. So if we do $7,115 minus that 482, oh, so 482, uh, let's just say 83, 
This is a difference of $2,832 that they still have left. And this is exactly what I'm talking about is that that property tax of 1.77 is still more than if the sales tax were to be 22%. In fact, guys, let's go even a step further. Let's continue using that six and a quarter sales tax and keep that $7,115. And let's see what the number actually ends up being. So once again, we had 289 right dollars per month and if we multiply that by that what is that 0 0.077 right 0 0.077 percent so obviously adding the 6.25 plus the 1.5 is 6 uh, 7.775 so times that 0 0.0775 which that's what it is right in, in decimals that would be guys 22 dollars and 39 cents so plus that 289 dollars we get 340 dollars per month multiply that by 12 we can see that this is now three thousand seven hundred and thirty six dollars and seventy seven cents plus that seven thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars at least just in austin we can see that's upwards of ten thousand basically eleven thousand dollars right ten thousand eight hundred and fifty one dollars so yeah even with a 22 percent, it'll still be cheaper it'll still be cheaper to increase it to 22 percent on sales tax than to keep the current sales tax which is a lot lower at six and a quarter and to have a property tax there and you. there you guys have the math behind it now that's just the analytical version of it the logical version of it is that when it comes to property taxes you don't make that decision right there's two things as to why i don't like property taxes number one you are not the one making the assessment on your house it is the government and the government can make the assessment on your house whatever they deem it to be i'm sure that they have some formula but we all know how good the government is when using formulas right <laughs> we we just we just we know how the fed goes right we know how the fed goes so the fact that the government can assess your house and then without you having a say in it at all, you then are forced to pay that property tax at the end of the year or else your house gets taken away from you by force. That to me is just insane it basically just proves that you really don't have property rights right you never owned your property if the government can just come and take it so the abolition of this property tax would essentially abolish that too which is really really good that's the first thing and then the second thing is when it comes to the sales tax is you control your own taxation right you control your own, own taxation obviously we all need food and we will continue to have food but honestly if people just don't want to pay for food we're talking about texas here they could just start doing the whole homesteading thing right just have extra pair of chickens to get more eggs or whatever it may be right so you do have that option but also you have the option of um you know not buying a new tv every week it's also that right you don't have to do that every single week so the fact that you are able to control your own taxation at that point is really really good and this is why i honestly support the abolition of the property tax yes i would prefer it if sales tax did not exist but man i would much rather have a sales tax than to have any form of property tax where if i don't pay the government based off of their own assessment they take my house from me so that's just my two cents on this and if texas does actually go through this texas will jump up to being my favorite state in the whole union I mean, you got no income tax, you got no property tax, and constitutional carry, which I absolutely adore. Those are like my two criterias, no income tax and constitutional carry, for me to live in the state. And then adding on top of that property taxes being abolished. So that right there would just be absolutely the cherry on top of the cake. So, and just like I promised at the beginning of the video, let's tie this back to dividends because, you know, I, I got to do it, right? I absolutely got to do it. So we just saw the median income, the median household income when it comes to Texas. And let's assume that you are making that exactly when it comes to dividends in the state of Texas. Well, at the federal level, the guys making $73,035, if, if I remember correctly, that lands you at the 0% tax bracket when it comes to dividend income. There you guys have it. So that means that at the federal level, they'll be taking $0 from you, making $73,000 or at least up to $94,050 if you're married filing jointly. So right then and there, you're keeping all of that money, assuming that they're qualified dividends. You're keeping all of that money. The state isn't taking you an income tax. The state is not taking your property tax. So you literally have $73,000 left to pay however, however much sales tax. Once again, it's beautiful. And I really wish that more people would know about this, but that's one of the reasons why 
I started making YouTube to begin with. So that way they wouldn't have to worry about too much about their finances, that will get settled and they could continue to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ more in their own community. So that pretty much does it guys for this video. Let me know what you guys think about this. I personally love it and I really do hope that we just get a nationwide, the federal income tax should be abolished, a nationwide flat sales tax, don't care. A lot better than having an income tax. A lot, trust me, it's a lot better. So I really am liking the fact that Texas is doing this. And technically, there is a way to not pay any income taxes if you have passive income through dividends, as I just showed everybody. Therefore, you do have the ability to pay zero in taxes if you live in Texas, assuming that that law gets put through. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. really does help you on YouTube as well as Rumble. And let me know if you guys like this new setup for, uh, for making videos. Um, I will give Mike the setup as well. So with that said, guys, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.